Hey guys, Clone Guy here, and today Flying Egg from Clan Clone Guy has sent us a fantastic replay featuring the newly buffed FCM 50 ton, and this is fantastic. I'm so glad that he had a great game in this tank because I wanted to talk about it because of its buffs it received in the last patch, and so this is the perfect replay to talk about it a little bit. So, the FCM 50 ton, what what is it? It is a French premium heavy tank, the first French premium heavy tank. Um, maybe the B, no, the B2 actually, never mind, the B1 is actually German, never mind then. So this is the first, and it has preferential matchmaking. And, uh, what does that mean? That means it never has to see tier 10. You saw a couple nines on the enemy team? Yep, this is, this, those are the max tanks we'll ever get to fight in this tank. It's got 212 millimeters of standard shell penetration, and I believe 259 millimeters on its premium pen, and you never have to fight tier 10s. So, yeah, that premium pen is going to be able to just butter pretty much any tank you're ever going to pen, which makes this a fantastic vehicle to play with. One of my favorite tanks to play with. And now we'll talk about the buffs. So this tank previously had 8 degrees of gun depression. Since the update 4.7, it now has 10 degrees, which is an amazing buff. I love 10 degrees. 10 degrees is obviously my favorite number. I mean, well, 12 degrees is obviously better than 15 and then so on and so forth. But I think 10 is like the perfect amount of gun depression. You have that on the Chieftain. You have that on the Super Conquer. You have that on the Action X. It's it's a fantastic number to have. And that's exactly what this tank has now. Then you have... What else? Oh yes, this tank used to have 1,500 hit points. Now it has 1,600. They buffed its hit points, which is also incredible and amazing. And one more thing they buffed on it was its rate of fire. It has an insane rate of fire increase. Um, I can look up the exact numbers it has now, actually, real quick. One thing you'll notice about this replay is the fact that he is using the replay system. And I know I said I don't like the replay system and I won't usually use the replay system. But because it's only the first half of this game and the second half, which is the exciting half, is recorded with Xbox... Um, it's great. And I understand not everybody has the ability to just record their games because they don't have a capture card like I do. Um, so I'm going to let this one slide. I'm going to let this one slide. It's too good to not let slide. It's So there's that. Okay, I'm clicking on the buff tank now. So its rate of fire is now 8.82 rounds a minute. So you can get this thing down. I have mine down, I believe, to 5.74 second reload. And I only have a gun rammer. You throw food on here, you throw vents, this thing's going to be faster than 5.5 seconds for sure less than five and a half seconds so that's 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 fantastic now he's doing something here um i don't know i can't see his mind right now obviously i am i'm not flying egg but i can i can kind of kind of translate what i think is going through his mind right now and what he has done is he has changed flanks we just had a replay the other day featuring the boiler maker where we talked about that um, changing flanks. In this case, he changed his flank not because his flank was losing, but because his flank was won, and he could go help on the other flank. And that's what he's done. And also, I believe he also didn't want to push out into the field or that kind of town area, because there's the city, and then there's like kind of this, like, fisherman's town near the lakes in JK 67890, right? And I, f I feel like he didn't want to go out there. That might be it might have been like, you know, a death zone. Lots of snipers. And so he's decided to fall back here and assist with this flank, which I think is the right play. Obviously it is because of the results he's going to have this game. But now um, he was just getting shot by what looked like an AMX 1357 because it hit him for about 99, which is a very low damaging roll. And I'm pretty sure that's the only tank in this game that will do that other than a distant splash from artillery. But now he's got this hammer. The... I've never seen Team Destruction on this map before. I have never seen this. I didn't know it existed on this map, but apparently it does. Look at the spawns. You've got one in the town and one in the field. It's almost like it's assault. So I have to ask Flying Egg, is this the EU server? Or is this just something I've never actually seen? Because I've noticed on the EU server, whenever I go there, I always get Corellia Assault. But I never get it when I'm on the NA server. So this is just a question I wanted to ask. Now, he's flying out, t flying out, he is flying out, he's driving out towards the field, trying to get shots on town, he's a very mobile tank, his, his tank is allowed to do this, oh, there we go, We're, we are to the normal game view, the sniper view, so this is great, thank you, I love this, this is good, now this is where he starts getting a bit excited, his team has killed six, their team has killed eight, so you're thinking, this game is pretty close, it's not too bad, not too bad at all, but he's still trying to just find shots right now, he's preserving his hit points, Getting distance, using his gun. It's a fantastic gun. You can snipe with this gun. 
I like this gun. It's one of my favorite guns. These um 90 mil 212 pen guns. You get it on the CDC as well, but it just doesn't feel as good. Ooh, that noise too is a fantastic noise. I love the noise. He's aiming up the shots on these 1357s. Fires another one, hits him, and now he is a one-shot kill. Will he be able to finish him off? No, that shell went a little bit high there. Will he find the shot here? He's aiming it up. Guy's accelerating quickly. And the shell barely goes past, goes behind him. And now he's got a shot on the arty. I think the artillery was a little bit higher than where he just aimed. But he fires it off anyway. Now, he's got some tanks in front. T-44 and IS. Oh, come on. Will he finish off the IS? Yes, he does. This tank is a dream. And with this reload, it's, it's amazing. The buff on this tank... In my opinion, the buff on this tank, I think, was a little bit unnecessary. I think they did it because PC did it, but I also think that they didn't need to do it. The um, the premium tanks on here, some of them are really good. Like, we've got the Panther 88 got buffed, even though that's one of the best played premium tanks on console compared to PC because it has pref matchmaking. STA2 is one of the best tanks played, and that got buffed a while ago. It got buffed. It had mm, 163 millimeters of penetration. And it went 45. Um, now it has 212 millimeters of penetration. I think it goes 50 or 55 now. So that got buffed, and it got an engine buff a while ago. And once again, I don't think it needed it. It got those buffs on PC. Why? Because on PC, it does not have preferential matchmaking. On here, it does. So I don't think it needed it. Um, the preferential tanks got buffed on PC, though, because of the new matchmaking changes. We don't have those new matchmaking changes. But I'm not going to complain. Now, he does something here. Which some of you might disagree with, but I completely do disagree with. He's sitting up here, hull down. He can poke this tiger anytime he wants. He gets to choose when the tiger gets to shoot at him. He's got 10 degrees of gun depression, which is more than enough to bully this poor tiger one who's down below him. But he's going to do something. He's going to go into the pit with him, which means the tiger one is going to be shooting him and going to be penning him. And some of you guys might be thinking, why didn't you stay up top? Once again, I'm going to use my detective skills and say I think it was because... Down here, artillery's gonna have a harder shot, and he's moving. When he's up top, he's letting RNG decide who wins the game, if one of those artillery hit. But by coming down into this little valley area, artillery's gonna have a harder shot, and he's moving around. So he decided, I'm willing to take a couple hits, a few hits actually, I think he took three, from the Tiger 1, if it means not letting RNG decide who wins this game. And that's what he did, and I think it was the right play, he lost about 600, how much did he lose? He, uh, he had only taken like two hits before. I think he took three hits from the Tiger. So, you know, he lost a fair bit. Um, almost 700 health, I think. No, no, it was only two hits. Never mind. He lost about 500 health. But had he stayed up top, he could have lost more if Artie had hit him. But by coming down here, Artie misses. Here, do you hear all those shells hitting all around him? But now he's going to do um, about the same thing with this guy, I think. Never mind. I'm speaking too early, guys. I've already seen this. So, yeah, and so now I'm spoiling things. Now, he's trying to get down here. He just got shot up by the 1357, so he knows where the 57 is. And let's see if he uh, remembers that. Yes, he does. He does get spotted the 57. The 57 is out in the open. There's no place for the 57 to run. So he's running, but unfortunately, the 57 does not have very good power to weight, as we've stated in a previous video. But here comes the T-44. They both auto-lock each other. There's something you don't want to do to a T-44 anymore now. It's got its turret armor buffed. I bounce off those things all the time when I auto-lock. But when you have the side of his tank, why not auto-lock? And that's what he's doing here, which is the good play. But now he's going to manually aim, which is the right play, so he doesn't shoot behind him with the auto-lock feature. And with his great rate of fire he's able to put another one in bounces another shell from the t-44 something this tank actually can do very reliably if you angle because the side armor is so good and he beats the reload of the t-44 and finishes him off and now it's just artillery and you know what while all that happened i forgot to say he was in a one versus six situation he had the 1357 the tiger one and the t-44 now he cuts a little bit here which is which is nice of him actually because i guess he did a lot of driving around um and he had to fit it all into his dvr I think, what, it can be 10 minutes max, something like that? I don't know exactly what it is, but uh, he cut that for us. Um, so he was in a 1 versus 6, and now he's in 1 versus 3. But unfortunately for him, he's got a GW Tiger P with, I don't know what those things calibers are, but they're huge. I think they're 210 millimeters. Then he's got the M4043, which has a 203 millimeter. And then he's got a Lorraine with a 155 millimeter, which isn't very scary. He has to pen him. If he hits direct, he's only going to do like 400 damage, 300 damage. It's like, it's, it's meh. But the other two tanks don't even have to hit him and they could kill him. 
So that's something you gotta keep in mind. And so he's gonna be trying to find these guys. They're, they've been shooting at him all game, so he obviously knows something we don't know. He thinks they're over towards this location. Everybody's pinging the map towards the field, but Flying Egg knows something they don't know, I think, because he's been getting shot at them, and voila, he finds himself the Lorraine. Look at, there he is, and the GW Tiger. Sorry, not the GW Tiger pig. That's right, he's in a Tier 9 game. It's the GW Tiger Tier 9, which I believe, because of that, it has a slightly better aim time and slightly better accuracy, so this makes him so much more dangerous. Now, some of you might be saying, why don't you load HE in this situation? And he's play doing the right thing by not loading HE, in my own opinion. The reason being is because that Lorraine is going to be a two-shot for him with AP, no matter what. So that's why he's keeping it loaded. Then same thing with the M4043. He's going to be a two-shot for him, no matter what. Now this GW Tiger P, it's a German artillery. Those things are troll. They've got the weak top armor, but the strong lower armor. So the HE is not going to be reliable. You have to make sure you hit your small shots. And he just wants to snap these in. Expose himself for as least amount of time as possible. 500 health, he's not going to two-shot him with his AP unless he rolls high. And as you can see, he just rolled for 193. So he's definitely not going to two-shot him. And then with the HE, like I said, it's too much of a risk against the German artillery. Maybe if it was an M5355, it might be a good call to use the HE. But once again, with the M5355... He could kill him with two shots with AP. So, so the, the 90 millimeter gun, 240 alpha, is in this weird place in the game, where the HE almost isn't an advantage. That's that's my opinion on how I feel about it. I mean, when you're fighting light tanks and you're in like a hell and hound, I think it, sometimes I think it is worth it. But here it's not. Now he's completely flanked around. He's trying to get these guys from different angles. But this GW Tiger, you're gonna see, is not a slouch. He's turned around. He's facing our hero. He figured it out. He actually went after the FCM, didn't spot him, turns around, um, and then snaps a shot off and gets killed for it. Because this GW Tiger went on the offensive. He decided, okay, he's falling back. Let me go check the corner. He goes and checks the corner. Doesn't spot him, so now he knows that he's flanking him. That was a great play by the GW Tiger. He was just a little bit too slow and then just launched his shot. He could afford to take a hit from the FCM and then could have just aimed a little bit and then maybe had a chance to finish off our hero. Enough talking about what the artillery could have done, let's get back to this game. So he knows where the Lorraine is and he knows where the M53 was or M40 was last spot and that was out in the field. He's going to go after the Lorraine first. Obviously you want to go for the tank that you know. You know where he is, may as well go after him. But then you could look at this the other way. Oh, there he goes, he spots him. The artillery is not ready for him and is now pulling in behind cover. You could you could think about this the other way. That artillery knows that he that our hero knows where he is. So that artillery is going to be getting ready to shotgun, right? So that would be a great opportunity to go after the other guy. However, it doesn't look like time is on his side. So he's going to go after the tank that he knows where it is. And if he can kill this guy, he may win, even if he can't kill the other artillery, because this is team destruction. So the highest damage cause wins. However, because it's just artillery left, artillery don't have many hit points, and Flying Egg's team only had two artillery units, which means his team had more hit points, which means the enemy team has done more damage. So he has to get this kill. But he did just spot the M4043. He was behind him in the town. Is he going to be able to find him? He's zigging and he's zagging. He is running out of time. He's got a minute and a half left. He does spot him there. There he is. He's going to lob a shot. Maybe just fire it off. He does and he misses. But the artillery is aiming. You know the artillery is aiming. So what would you do in this situation? I personally would turn around and head the other way. Using this building as cover. And getting distance from him. But uh, he's going to do something a little bit different here. I think think it's because he has he does have a few hit points as long as he doesn't hit direct so he's gonna go around this corner but the artillery is aiming he fires oh and he pulls back just in the nick of time and the shell misses him and he leaves him on just 100 hit points and he finishes him off with the very next shell a little bit of risky business at the end of that game but you know what it worked so what am i to say you know i can't say anything about that it worked so there we go he pulls out a fantastic game a game i would never have been able to pull off because I can't get Call of Banos, I'm not allowed to. He pulls out 9 kills, 6,200 damage, 1,172 assists. The Call of Banos medal, a Top Gun, Devastator, and the Radley Walters. But of course, the Call of Banos medal, and 2,653 base experience points. And he made 225,000 credits because he did not have to shoot any premium rounds. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys all enjoyed. If you did, please slap that like button, comment, and subscribe. Thank you, Flying Egg, for sending this in. It was a fantastic fantastic replay he is of course a super unicum so you're going to see 
amazing plays from him, and that's what he did. He was thinking. You could tell he thought through that entire process. And I think the biggest play, the biggest play he made, in my opinion, after watching that, and I'm going to do this for the community replays. I'm going to have a big, the big play, and so I'll show it again. His biggest play, most thought-out play, was a play he made on the Tiger. Instead of sitting up on the ridge, most people would have sat up on the ridge and been like, I've got 10 degrees of gun depression. This Tiger one can't shoot me. Ha ha ha. Good guess guess who can't the artillery i think that was the biggest and most thought out play thank you once again for sending this in if you guys want to send me your own replays send them to clone guy 72 at gmail.com and make sure you go check out space bandit and gun youtube links in the description below take care guys and peace out